Hello again gamers, welcome back to the Board Game Captain. I'm the Captain and today I'm going to be reviewing and talking about Savage Sisters, which is a role-playing game, a little zine-sized role-playing game published by Ninth Level Games with their Polymorph system. So I want to give a big thank you to Ninth Level Games for this free copy of Savage Sisters to be able to read and play in my games with and also for doing some content on. So uh, thank you very much, Ninth Level Games. Now, before I get too into this, I do want to say I've got a ton of links in the description down below that you can check out at your leisure. There's a link to BoardGameCaptain.com, a great hub for all things Board Game Captain, as well as a link to my Teespring store where you can get some cool Board Game Captain merch and a link to my Patreon if you'd like to support the channel. All right, so Savage Sisters, a role-playing game. Um, now, this game was uh, designed by uh, Adriel Lee Wilson. I'm going to show up on the screen here the all of the various people involved in the production of this game. Uh, and, and the game, um, at the beginning of the first page, we've got a, a quote here from the intro from the old Xena the Warrior Princess TV show, uh, which kind of gives you an idea of what you're in for here. So this, this is a... Zine-sized role-playing game using yet another variation on the polymorph system that uh, all of the games from Ninth Level Games seem to use. Um, but one that is meant to be a ancient world sword and sorcery fantasy adventure game in a setting with lots of badass warrior women. Uh, so you can think things like Xena Warrior Princess or Red Sonia, etc. Uh, now that said... Uh, it doesn't mean you have to, everyone in there needs to be female if you are male and not comfortable playing a female character. There's a uh, paragraph fairly early on on gender and the fact that, uh, you know, you can be male or female, especially since the polymorph system, very rules light as it is, uh, there is absolutely no difference between playing a male character and a female character. I mean, you know, even in rules heavier systems, there's very rarely a difference between playing a male character and a female character. Um, it's just giving you an idea of, of what the setting is like. But that said, I mean, the setting is really just an ancient world sword and sorcery setting. So, again, Red Sonia, Conan, uh, Xena Warrior Princess, Hercules, you can be male and female in various uh, settings. So if you're doing the Xena setting, uh, female characters might make characters similar in archetype to Xena or Gabrielle, whereas male players might be more similar to Autolycus or Jocks or the Mighty, but maybe less useless. Um, yes, I have seen every episode of Xena Warrior Princess. Uh, that said, uh, the game the game setting is fairly light. Uh, it, it, it takes for granted that you kind of know what... Uh, the settings of these sort of sword and sorcery ancient world ga uh, games and fiction are like. The, um, the rules are also fairly light, even for a uh, polymorph game. This is actually one of the lightest implementations of the game system. Uh, there are plenty of things in other versions of this game system in other games uh, that are not here. So there, there is no advancement system, no way to level up. There is... The basics of the game system and most of the, the versions of the polymorph are still here. Uh, every character picks a role, which is sort of like a class, which basically is what die you roll for everything. So the dice, of course, are the, four, the d4, the d6, the d8, and the d10. And then depending on which task you're going for for these roles, as you can see here at the bottom, uh, there's a cheat sheet on every character sheet. Certain tasks are much easier to be passed by certain roles because the successful numbers needed to pass them are, you know, are more common on certain dice. So for instance, um, the test of scrolls, which is like a knowledge test, you need a two or a three to pass that. So the best chance of getting that is on a D4. So the D4 is the best for a thinking character. Uh, test of sandals is on a three, four, five. Test of scythes is on a four, five, six, or seven. Test of skulls is on a five, six, seven, eight, or nine. Now, if you roll a one, this is a, a, a very much, uh, uh, game setting where the deities uh, of the setting do take an active part, supernatural, 
uh, events or something that happens often. This is meant to be more of a low fantasy setting, but if you roll a 1, you will have a miraculous intervention by your deity or supernatural creatures, and you get to... Um, you get to explain how that happens. Uh, a one is a success in that way, but in a different way than just you succeeding at the task. Um, it, it, it is kind of interesting and very thematic in that way. Now, that said, though, you might be saying to yourself, and you'd be right, you might be saying, hey, how is this that different from, say, mazes? Mazes feels, you know, like a also ancient world or medieval, or ancient world to medieval, depending on, on, on how you look at it fantasy setting, but Mazes has more meat on it. It has the ability to level up, and it, and it has uh, actual, you know, um, rules for, for specific monsters rather than just rolling the tasks on, on avoiding the monsters or attacking the monsters like Savage Sisters does. And, and there is a difference, though. And the most interesting part of this book uh, is, is specifically how you are meant to play out a game of Savage Sisters. So the idea with Savage Sisters is um, not just about the setting. The idea of Savage Sisters is that you are it is meant to be very much a callback to ancient storytelling around a fire. Uh, the sort of thing that people have been saying is the influence for role-playing games since the, the invention of modern role-playing games. I've been saying that you know communal storytelling is really the the main inspiration behind the creation of the role playing game genre, and this is very much meant to call back to that. So the thing is, you are all supposed to be people sitting around a fire telling tales communally and taking over from one another. Now you each pick a character in the tale that you are going to represent that is going to be your your character that you're playing, but you're not actually them. You're actually someone telling the story. It's just you are controlling them in the tale. And you each get a chance at being Game Master. Now, this is very interesting. Uh, you're meant to basically... If I start as Game Master, I go through the first main event. But then when I'm done, the next person takes over and they go through the next major event. And then the next person takes over and it goes round robin. Uh, while you are Game Master, your character becomes more of an NPC. And... Uh, and you will all communally tell the story. So now there are some really good things and some really bad things about this, in my opinion. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is the fact that on a positive note, this really helps to um, uh, play a very impromptu role-playing game. You can slap out a character of this in under three minutes. Uh, it's so easy to make your character. You can just like quickly brainstorm amongst the group. Okay, what are we what are we going for? What kind of story do we want to tell? And you can just jump into it. You bring through the first major event. The next player, inspired by you, takes you to the next major event, and so on. And that can be really cool. Uh, this can make for uh, with a creative group of people a very cool impromptu role playing game, which I like. That is a very fun thing. But there are some issues. So the thing is, you're assuming that everybody in the group is going to want to Game Master some. Is going to want to be the GM for a little while there. And I mean, that's really necessary for this game to function properly as written. Uh, I play with a lot of people that don't want to touch that at all. Now, you could skip over them, and you could also maybe play this with a single Game Master, like classic uh, role-playing games. But doing so kind of makes you lose what is the most interesting part of this game. The whole communal aspect of this game is by far and away the thing that makes it stand out the most. So I feel like this game can be really awesome, but you you really have to play it with a group of people that you know can be both creative as game masters or storytellers as well as role players. You also want to play it with people that you know will not fall into the trap of using their character as a DMPC and, you know, make them solving all the problems rather than have the other players solve the problems while they are game mastering. Um, so, so this can be awesome, but you do need the right group of players to play it, which makes it a little more restrictive. Um, because the, I know plenty of people that I have played role-playing games with that would not want to jump in and Game Master. They prefer to be more of a background character and only interject on occasion 
um, when they feel confident enough to do so. Uh, so, yeah, so there's some very big pluses, but also some minuses there. Uh, that said, if you do have a group of people where everybody game masters, uh, this could be an awesome game for you. Now, a couple other just quick things I wanted to note, some questionable stuff in here. Uh, one thing that's a little weird, uh, even though there's no leveling up, uh, they do note in here that when you take injury, your injuries remain. So you don't gain experience, but you can gain lasting injuries. Uh, and also, if your character dies, you can come back as the same character and just play them in an earlier time period, which feels a little odd to me because then what happens if that character dies again? Are we just supposed to assume that one of the stories was, was false? That, um, you know, but again, because you are uh, telling the stories around the fire, that seems like the most logical explanation to me but i feel like they missed an opportunity to just say hey just make another character because why not just make another character i mean uh all of these are basically one-offs anyway even if they are about the same character since there's no real character advancement there's no leveling up no improving your stats um so it, it, i just felt like but again that's a minor thing you can just do that you can just make a new character you can just play it that way uh, overall, I am more positive as, on this game than I am negative. I do think it is is pretty cool. It's very rules light, easy to jump into, very easy to, and quick to make a character in. And as long as you have a group of people that can get into it and get really into the storytelling aspect of it, this could make a really fun impromptu role-playing game session here or there at a convention, um, at a gaming event. On a game night where not everybody could show up for your regular role-playing game. Even on a board game night, as long as the people there are the kind of people that would enjoy this communal storytelling type of game. So overall, I would recommend Savage Sisters to you. Um, if all of that sounds interesting, if all of that sounds fun, and if you have the right group of people to be able to play this with. So overall, I'm going to give Savage Sisters 7.5 stars out of 10. I do think this is quite fun. Um, and you know what? This is like a very affordable, tiny little zine-sized book, as most of these are. This is a little staple binding, black and white printing, um, but fun-looking book with some fun little little bits, little bits of artwork in in here. This one is real quick to read. I was able to go through it in just one day. Uh, total of only uh, forty-two pages, but yeah. Uh, so not a huge commitment to getting this one. But there you have it. Uh, 7.5 stars out of 10. Uh, if you have played Savage Sisters, let me know what you thought of it in the comments down below. Uh, and let me know how the whole communal role-playing aspect worked out for you and your group. If you enjoyed this review of a role-playing game product and you'd like me to do more like it in the future, be sure to give it a like, share it on all forms of social media, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the Board Game Captain. That's Captain spelled a K on YouTube. And until next time, game on.